Tonight on CTV News, Redcliffe School will close, but the community is not giving up yet. A fire destroys the back of a bus, and Cantabrians recognise White Ribbon Day. Kia ora, good evening. The Redcliffe's community say they'll fight Education Minister Hikia Parata's decision to close the school at the end of 2016. Parata announced an interim decision to close the school against parents and the school's wishes. Redcliffe school pupils were moved off their site after the 2011 earthquakes and subsequent rockfall left questions about their safety. The pupils have been learning from the nearby Van Ash Deaf Education Centre in Sumner, but the community has been campaigning to get their school back. The efforts have been shot down by a decision from the Ministry of Education today. This has been a long period of uncertainty for the school and the broader community. Um, thousands of submissions put in and the Minister today has announced that the school is going to close after all. Ms Dyson, an avid campaigner for the school to come back, says she is shocked by the decision. I'm pretty stunned actually that there is no reason to close this school. Um, the Minister did say that she'd consider the submissions that were put in. There were 2,700, a bit more, submissions. Not a single one was in favour of closure. Education Minister Hekia Parata said in a release today that she realised it is not the decision the community had hoped for. She said the decision was made based on concerns about the unstable cliff behind the school. But Ms Dyson says the fight is not over yet. I think Redcliffe's community will probably take a step back and say let's regroup and have a think what to do next. But I don't think this is the last we've heard of this matter. People feel passionately about their school. It's been the number one topic of conversation for a long time. When is our school coming home? Um, I don't think we've seen the end of this discussion. The Redcliffe School will continue to operate out of Van Ash while other options are looked at and more discussions take place about the future of the school. Emma J McLennan, CTV News. It's White Ribbon Day today and with family violence a nationwide issue, Cantabrians flock to Cathedral Square to show their support. Chelsea Daniels reports. Cantabrians gathered in Cathedral Square today to say no to family violence. New Zealand has some of the worst statistics in the world when it comes to the problem, with half of the nation's homicides a result of family violence. And it's something that Minister of Justice Amy Adams says is a national embarrassment. I think New Zealand is a little bit complacent about this issue uh, and I want to shock people into understanding that New Zealand should be embarrassed, we should be mortified and absolutely unaccepting uh, of, the, of the rates of family violence in this country. One in three women Women in New Zealand will experience physical or sexual violence from a partner in their lifetime, with Māori women being three times more likely. So far this year, 32 Kiwis have lost their lives to family violence, 16 of these being children. We have the highest rate of reported violence against intimate partners, so husbands, wives, boyfriends and the like, uh, and one of the worst rates of child abuse. And I just don't think a country that has all of the advantages we do, all of the things we pride ourselves on, should for one moment accept that that's OK. The minister was a special guest at the rally today, as well as Mayor Leanne Dalzell, Crusaders coach Todd Blackadder and Ken Canterbury District Commander John Price. I mean that's actually frightening stuff. We're rebuilding our city. We can build safe homes as well as the safe streets. Blackadder says the whole team is behind the Wire Ribbon campaign and serve as positive role models. You're there to protect your family, that's the first rule. And you're there to support your children, your wife or your partner, that's the first rule. And if you're struggling with that then you need to get some help. Last year, police recorded a family violence investigation on average every five and a half minutes. And currently, 60% of all police call-outs in Canterbury involve family violence. Every time we deal with one of those incidents, it can take up to about five hours of police time. Superintendent Price says people should feel comfortable calling police if they are involved in a matter or see it happening. But the key to this is the family itself and the key to that is those that are close to the family. They're the ones that can break it, make a difference. And Mrs Adams agrees. I think it's about recognising first of all that family violence is an insidious awful scar on New Zealand and it's about making every New Zealander recognise how significant a challenge this is for us and to get them to stop and think about what they can do uh, to make it very clear that violence in any form is not okay.
If you or someone you know is experiencing violence, contact one of these agencies on screen now for help. Chelsea Daniels, CTV News. An early morning blaze has destroyed most of a busy Christchurch engineering firm. Brian Ford Engineering in Wollston went up in smoke around 1am with the blaze affecting most of the large building. 11 fire appliances scrambled to the blaze with most leaving the scene around 4am. Fire crews went back out at around 1pm after a fire investigator discovered smoke coming from the roof. The fire is now out and investigations are continuing. A bus driver found himself in a fiery situation also. The incident happened at 2.40 this afternoon when the driver discovered flames coming out of the engine compartment. The driver had just pulled over and what he was, he was uh, being a really hot day, he just got himself a bottle of water from the dairy and uh, the problem started when he tried to restart his bus. A decision on a South New Brighton campground is likely to be made this week. It's been in limbo since the 2011 earthquakes. Emma J. McLennan reports. The South Brighton Holiday Park has been operating at half strength for almost five years, all because of a toilet block which the council hasn't got around to repairing. The situation has frustrated owners and residents, including one who has lived there with her husband for the past 11 years and says she loves the place. This has been just a really perfect place to live. You know, we're so close, we've got the beach, we've got the forest, we've got the estuary, and it's like living in a little park. Yeah, it's great. Tomorrow the City Council will vote on a proposal to invite offers from anybody interested in running the site as a camping ground or something similar. But the owners say they are frustrated that it has taken so long. Having one toilet block closed has hurt the business and the problem could have been solved a long time ago. Ms Fife says they've been doing an incredible job in spite of the situation. They've kept on going, they've kept the spirit of the place alive, um, very, very much so under very adverse conditions. Um, so many things they would have liked to have done to improve and remedy a lot of the situations in the camp, but because of not having a proper lease and not having proper terms and conditions, they haven't been able to do that. Ms Fife says she understands the campground being low on the post-quake priority list, but thinks the problem could still have been sorted years ago. Because it is actually quite small, surely it could be remedied quite quickly. But we're hoping, we're just hoping, just tired. A decision will be made this week to help progress the site, but whatever happens, the Fife family will be sorted. When asked what they would do if they lost their current home, Ms Fife brought up another topic entirely, freedom camping. Emma J McLennan, CTV News. Well, still to come, your neighbourhood news. Welcome back. Police have named the man who was found nearly 200 metres south of the New Brighton Pier. 57-year-old Graham Gurren was found by members of the public on the beach early on Sunday morning. A post-mortem has been completed and police are not treating the death as suspicious. It's now been referred to the coroner. Well, while many are pleased to see temperatures soar, the Cancer Society is warning those getting ready for the summer sun. A sweltering Christchurch day has caused many to flock to the pools and beach for a welcome dip, just a taste of the summer to come. But when you live in a country where more people die from skin cancer than road accidents, sun damage can be a huge issue. There's a lot of ageing, so more wrinkles, more sunspots, all that kind of thing, and then you're also more likely to get skin cancer. So there's New Zealand and Australia have the highest skin cancer rates in the world, and Approximately 350 people a year die from skin cancer in New Zealand. So, yeah, it's higher than the road toll, which is not nice. That's exactly why it's important to listen to the Cancer Society's message this summer, which goes above and beyond just putting on sunscreen. Once you're outside, a hat's a really important thing. Um, something with a brim, sunglasses, something to protect your eyes is also really important, and then clothing and shade. But there was some good news out there. With raised skin cancer awareness, Christchurch people seem to be making good choices for themselves and their children. I've got a hat on her, I've got togs that cover her really, really well and some sunscreen. There were plenty of hats, long sleeve rash tops and bottles of sun cream at the Hagley Park paddling pool today. For mother of two, Jo Nash, it's a top priority to protect her kids from the sun. I've actually had um, some precancerous smalls removed myself and there's skin cancer in my family. 
so I'm just extra diligent because of because of that. So if you're heading out in the sunshine this week, remember the rhyme. Slip, it's slop, nice, slap nice. and rip. And it's looking like another great day for tomorrow with a forecast high of 27 degrees. Emma Jamie McLennan, CTV News. Naitahu's launched a new pack for babies to help reduce the alarming rate of sooty deaths in New Zealand. From the start of next year, Naitahu babies are said to receive packs under a new initiative. It's about reducing the amount of our Māori babies, particularly our Ngaitahu babies that are dying from um, SIDS. And also it's about connections, it's about engaging our most recent tribal members at the earliest possible stage. More than 60% of babies who die from sudden unexpected death in infancy are Māori, but the tribe is looking to change that. Māori are overrepresented in a lot of health statistics around the country, both you know, at the negative end, so you know, it is... It's not a good situation, so it's really, this is one way that our tribe can, can make a difference. So it's about, you know, how can we increase the, the knowledge of whānau and promote these um, safe sleeping techniques. It was an idea floated back in May. The PP packs will be sent out to all newborns in the tribe from around Aotearoa and the world. Each package includes clothes, books and a flax pot to be used as a bed for babies. Um, currently we know that our tribal membership tends not to register or begin engaging with our tribal services until about eight or nine years old. So this is one way we can um, get our foot in the door a bit earlier and support our whānau um, in the regions um, around the world, wherever they may be located. It's not understood how much it costs to put the packs together, but so far more than 30 have registered already. The research and study validates that the more investment at the earliest possible stages um, has benefits that are exponential, so it's, it's a very important project for us. Put a few more books in there, we want to um, develop a, another pack that's targeted at early childhood, our school starters, and eventually working up to our rangatahi, our, our teenagers. Naitahu are urging those to register for the packs, with delivery expected in January. Now let's cross to Bridget Rutherford in the newsroom with what's happening in your neighbourhood. Thanks Jared. Merivale's Charlotte Gray's campaign for a new playground has paid off, with $85,000 worth of equipment expected to be installed early next year. Gray started the Merivale Community Playground Incorporated. With the help of the Fendleton Waimari Community Board, Fendleton New World, Canterbury Community Trust and an anonymous donation, it raised half the money needed for the project. Christchurch City Council matched the amount dollar for dollar. The playground will be built on in Merivale Reserve on Rugby Street. The first two homes have been completed in another new subdivision in Rolleston. Selwyn is New Zealand's fastest growing district with much of that growth happening in Rolleston. BT Builders says the homes in Beaumont Park have both received plenty of interest. One has already been snapped up and the other is currently on the market through Harcourts. Additional homes will be finished in March. Once complete there will be 96 homes there. An elementary school from Japan has teamed up with two Christchurch schools to create an international artwork. St James and Selwyn House schools, as part of a United Nations educational project, have completed half of a two metre long mural. It will now be sent to Okazaki in Japan. From there, 33 fifth grade pupils from Odagawa Elementary School will complete it. The project was decided on after a Skype call between the three schools, which included a lot of sign language and acting out words due to the language language barrier. Farmers in Methven, Tamuka and Darfield are among the best when it comes to rural recycling. Ag Recovery, which helps farmers recycle their empty agrochemical containers for free, has ranked its top 10 collection sites from around the country. Methven was first with about 14,000 kgs of container plastic recycled and Tamuka was seventh with about 7,000 kgs. Darfield came in at 10th despite not having a permanent collection site. Darfield farmers will have another opportunity to add to their tally when the next collection takes place at the local PGD Wrightsons on December 16th. And Littleton's Norman Kirk Memorial Pool may be open a bit longer this summer. The City Council has agreed to train Littleton Time Bank members as lifeguards, providing they suit the requirements. More lifeguards could mean the pool remains open for longer. The new pool was officially opened in February for one week after having to be rebuilt following the earthquakes. From the newsroom, I'm Bridget Rutherford.
Thanks for that, Bridget. It's good news for musical theatre fans. Mary Poppins is underway with a long season at the court, and now Christchurch Showbiz is getting set for their most ambitious year yet. Three shows are set to light up the Isaac Theatre Royal in 2016. Georgina O'Connor-Harding reports. Oh, 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 you can't stop the day. It's a big year ahead for one Christchurch theatre company with their busiest season yet. Three blockbuster shows will take centre stage at the Isaac Theatre Royal in 2016. The Society held its exclusive launch with tickets going on sale today. It is utterly fantastic for Christchurch. I, I really can't even begin to think about the city without a facility like the Isaac Theatre Royal. I'm so excited that it's back open. Uh, at Showbiz we're thrilled that we're able to put all of these shows into the theatre. Musical theatre goers can look forward to three different main stage shows hitting the city next year, including Mamma Mia, Hairspray and Evita. The renowned local organisation will be casting hundreds of performers and looking for backstage helpers to join them for a busy year. We're looking for the latest, greatest global blockbusters there are. Um, because of the earthquakes which closed the Isaac Theatre Royal, um, we've had quite a few of these shows queued up for a number of years, Hairspray especially. Um, we've been waiting a good five or six years to get it on stage, so we're excited to have the chance now. Preparations for the romantic comedy hit show Mamma Mia have already begun, with rehearsals set to begin this weekend. We've cast Mamma Mia and that goes into rehearsal this Sunday, um, but we'll be having auditions for Hairspray at the end of February and we're looking for a very diverse cast for that. Everyone is welcome through our doors and then uh, in May we'll be auditioning for Evita, so it's a chance for all Cantabrians. I get out here, Buenos Aires, it's time to back. As for other shows, auditions for Hairspray and Evita will be held at the Christchurch showrooms next year. Georgia O'Connor-Harding, CTV News. We'll still to come here on CTV News, sport and your region's weather. Welcome back. Now here's Gordon Finlater with the latest in local sport. Well, starting with tennis and clubs will attend a forum tonight to discuss a proposal which could see the affiliation fee clubs pay to Canterbury Tennis change. At present, clubs pay a fee to Canterbury Tennis based on the number of senior players at the club. The proposed change would see the fee change to be based on the number of courts that the club has. A number of clubs that currently have lower numbers of senior members but a high number of courts are worried they may be disadvantaged should the change go ahead. One of those clubs is Hagley Park, whose annual fee could potentially rise from just over $6,000 to over $10,000. The club has 28 courts, including 22 grass courts, which come with a high maintenance cost. And with just 97 senior members, Hagley President Alex Sutherland is worried they may have to disaffiliate from Canterbury Tennis if the changes go ahead. We'll bring you more on this tomorrow following tonight's forum. Well, to cricket now and the Canterbury Kings return to Hagley Oval tomorrow for their seventh 2020 game of the season. The Kings have just one win to show to date and find themselves lingering at the bottom of the competition ladder. Tomorrow's match will see the Kings take on third-placed Auckland, with the Kings desperately needing to turn their form around if there's any chance of making it to the competition's playoff stage. Play at Hagley will get underway tomorrow from 4pm. Or to football, where Canterbury United's 2-1 victory over Team Wellington last weekend may have come at a price. United faced the tough task of an away trip to competition favourites Auckland City on Sunday and could be without three key players for the match. Defenders Julian Collett and Brock Messenger are both doubtful after sustaining injuries on Sunday, 
while English midfielder Gary Ogilvy looks set to miss the big game after sustaining a knock to his right ankle. Canterbury are currently two from two this season and can capture top spot with a win over Auckland on Sunday. And finally, a big congratulations to Medbury School's first 11, who took out the New Zealand Post Cup National Cricket Finals today at Lincoln. Medbury took on the top five other schools from around the country and have come out on top after three days of competitive cricket. Medbury School captain Zach May had the honour of receiving the trophy earlier today, which is sure to be treasured by the group of potential future Black Caps. Great stuff. Well, you're up to date with the latest in local sport. I'm Gordon Findlater for CTV Sport. Thanks for that, Gordon. Now it's time for your region's weather forecast. And Mercy, there's a weather warning in place for tomorrow. Thanks, Sharon. Yes, we do have a wind warning in place for tomorrow afternoon and evening. Going to be very blustery with gale force winds, but we'll update you on that as the report goes on. Very balmy day today, though, wasn't it? It actually got to 28 there for you, Timaru. Central Canterbury, it was lovely and warm here as well. Maybe it's a little bit too warm for some. 28 was the high there for Christchurch and Akaroa there. One more than predicted, 29 actually was breached by Ashburton taking out the region's high today. Looking further north, it was actually a little bit cooler up the top of North Canterbury. So Kaikoura still warm but on 23 there, Colvard on 24 and 22 for Hamner Springs. Alpine region now 14 for you Arthur's Pass and 19 for Lake Tekapo. Checking out tomorrow we're also seeing that hot weather return. So northwesterly winds very blustery, gusting between the 110 to 20 kilometres per hour for you Timaru, 27 is your high. Ashburton 27 is also your high, so again might only need one layer of clothing there and 14 for the overnight low. 28 for you Christchurch, going to be a very scorcher of a day, Northwesterly winds could be quite strong as the day goes on. Kaikoura you can also expect that blustery, blustery wind to be with you, we're expecting gusts between 140 to 60 kilometres per hour. Looking ahead for the rest of the Canterbury region, South Canterbury, sunshine and lots of northwesterly winds for you, Tamuka on 27. Degrees. Central Canterbury again very balmy indeed 28 is your high there Dalfield and 27 for everyone else here with very mild morning starts. Heading further north that beautiful northwesterly wind will also be seen up here but it could be quite strong so make sure you hold on to your hats. 29 is the high there for Hamner Springs, Colwyn and Amberley. Over to the Alpine region here Lake Tekapo on 24 and 22 for Mount Cook. Checking out the upcoming day Friday is looking lovely and sunny as well. We are seeing that northwesterly wind in the morning dying off as the day goes on and there could be a few spillover showers from the west but mostly dry and quite warm temperatures as well. Flipping over to Saturday, temperatures are a little bit lower but still really pleasant. So 20 degrees there for Ashburton and 21 for Christchurch with those northwesterly winds dying out as the day goes on. Looking ahead for the rest of the Canterbury region, Friday we are seeing that northwesterly flow in the morning that will be dying out as the day goes on on and a little bit of rain there could be seen as we see spillover showers from the west. On Saturday temperatures should be between the 18 and 21 degree mark so a really pleasant day and those northwesterly winds dying out as the day goes on. So over the next few days we are expecting that really really strong gale force wind tomorrow particularly for North Canterbury and high country areas so make sure you're prepared for that and really just enjoy that sunshine over the next few days. That's your update for Wednesday. Back to you, Jared. Thanks for that, Mercy. And just before we go tonight, it's Alex, our cameraman's birthday today. So happy birthday to you. And that is uh, CTV News for tonight. You can find all our stories on demand at ctv.co.nz. Thanks so much for joining us. I'm Jared McCulloch. Good evening. Supporting local content so you can see more of New Zealand on air.